Greetings nerdy list aficionados and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. Today we're taking a look at those moments that heroes don't like to dwell on too much, and that's their defeats. However, these losses need to be examined, because on the whole, some of them make no sense. This can be because of a power imbalance or because of writing. We will take a look at it all here on Top 10 Nerd. I'm Sasha, and let's get started with our list of the top 10 scary superhero losses that make no sense. Number 10, the X-Men versus Wolverine. Let's start off with a loss that is actually a crucial plot point of the entire story taking place. We're looking at Old Man Logan, a beloved alternate universe story about a dark dystopian future. In this future, villains reign, and a retired Wolverine embarks across America on a journey to try to help his family. This is after he's retired. He'll never kill again. But you know, of course he does. The story plays well, it's interesting, and the environments and world building are done well. However, the loss that starts it off revolved around the idea that while brainwashed by Mysterio, Wolverine killed all the X-Men who were with him at that time. And when we pan out, this includes not just Jubilee, but Cyclops, Gambit, Havoc, Storm, Omega Level Iceman, and more. There's just no way. No way at all. The rationale given is that they hesitated because he was their friend, but they deal in a world where people get possessed all the time. You're saying that working as a group, they couldn't take him down, subdue him, because all the bodies are in one room. They're not spread out. Even one-on-one, -on -one, several of these people have taken him out. It's clearly a necessary loss, meaning it's necessary to drive the plot forward and for his pathos. But narratively, if you think about it, it doesn't make that much sense with the canon. Number nine, Wonder Woman, bound by a man. This is low because, well, conceptually, I actually get it. There's a lot of bondage going on in early Wonder Woman. Her creator was into it, and it's not a secret, nor was his lifestyle. He believed in woman's strength, but also in the power of submission. That female submission was a gift if freely given, but a chain if taken. It's a complex, slightly seemingly contradictory thought process, and many people are quick to jump on it as misogynistic. But it's this this intriguing fusion of that time's gender politics, also a level of progressivism, and BDSM. Someone having thoughts from their time and environment is not something to be sneered at or mocked. Most people do, even today. People are only ahead of their time in retrospect. But here's the thing, narratively it makes no sense. A man chains her and she's down for the count. Why? She's a magical godly Amazon. It's even confusing narratively in the story while it's happening. So yeah, not sad that weakness went away, but no kink shaming people. Number eight, Hal loses his ring in the New 52. The New 52 DC reboot completely reset the DC universe. One of the rollbacks was to get rid of legacy characters by saying that heroes had only been operating for five years, except for Batman who had been operating for 10, and yet somehow still had the same number of sidekicks. When the Justice League gets together here, Batman and Green Lantern and Hal Jordan spend a substantial amount of time together. And during this time, while they're traveling through a sewer, Hal is teasing Batman about just being a guy in a bat costume. At which point Batman turns around to reveal that he's holding his ring. And then Hal's costume dissolves. Okay, several things. One, how. He got through the force field, took the ring off his hand without him feeling it while they were walking, and the costume didn't dissolve until Hal noticed it was gone. I love this moment, but it makes no sense. It's part of that who is better back and forth that lots of writers have with Batman and Hal. So you'll often find one of them as being written in super cool god mode in their scenes together. Hal loses his ring. I believe it, but not like that. Number seven, Superman versus Doomsday. Ah, the death of Superman. A pivotal moment when the need for horizontal tie-in synergy marketing resulted in a storyline born out of frustration because the wedding that the writing staff had planned to do had to be postponed. So instead of getting married, Superman died. But how to kill him? Well, the option that was gone with was punch to death just fought until he exhausted himself and died. There are numerous things about this that make no sense. For one thing, it places Doomsday on the level of Planet Destroyer, which in later appearances he never even comes close to, not really. Clark can just defeat him after this. Two, this makes you have to get into the mindset that this is the hardest fight Clark has ever had. Thankfully, most will suspend disbelief to let that happen, but really it's a bit anticlimactic. I'd buy so many other deaths, weakened by Red Sun or Kryptonite, something. Still, the emotion of the story carries it forward, even if the logic does not. And that's what you need in a case like this. Number six, Harley Quinn versus Superman. 
This one is lower because this story is meant to be taken with a grain of salt. This is from the Harley's Little Black Book series. In this story, she ends up fighting Superman in a boxing match. This is while the Man of Steel is depowered to even the odds. Now Harley loves roller derby, I can believe she loves boxing, and boxes in her spare time. But there's this idea that because Clark has powers, he's never learned how to fight. Which, okay, fair assumption, but he's also been depowered a lot, so maybe he would have done something about that? Also, he weighs significantly more than her. I need a bit more deets before I can just go with this one. But again, these stories are from Harley's perspective, so grain of salt. Number five, Star-Lord versus Thanos. Let's hop over to the MCU for a moment, to a loss that induced rage and even for a time become a small meme. Star-Lord losing focus during the planet-side battle with Thanos in Infinity War. The moment that cost the heroes everything. Few could believe Peter's actions in this scene. With so much at stake to just choke and let the world down, let his emotions get the better of him. Some afterwards went so far as to name him the worst hero in the MCU. Here's the thing, this had to happen because if it did not, the emotion is what is keeping everything at the forefront in Infinity War, and if you lose that, the fact that it's actually stakeless becomes abundantly clear. Thanos in no way uses the stones he has correctly. With the stones he has at that point, he really doesn't need to fight them at all. That he is fighting them just shows massive arrogance or a lack of creativity. So because of that, emotions need to be kept high to distract the audience. Just like later with Vision, he has the time stone. Nothing matters. He can undo anything. You can't get me with your music. I have a heart of ice. Number 4. Batwoman vs Batgirl aka the League of Assassins The Silver Age was an interesting time, and more went down than just strange plots and Batman having a rainbow suit. No, we were also introduced to Kathy Kane, Batwoman, a character created entirely to prove to the world that Batman was not gay. This of course was because of the book Seduction of the Innocent, that claimed that Batman and Robin were in a pedophilic gay relationship. Seeing as how this was the era where there was a panic that comics were leading to deviance, a female love interest was quickly devised for Batman and for Robin. Robin got Betty Kane, Kathy's cousin. Kathy first appeared in Detective Comics number 233 in 1956, and even for the time, readers found her outdated, with her utility purse and weaponized powder puffs and lipsticks. They much preferred Barbara Gordon, Batgirl who appeared on the Adam West TV show, who was a modern independent woman, much more in line with shifting cultural values. And so one day in the comics, Batman came back to the Batcave and Batwoman was just dead, on the floor, just gone. There was a note from the League of Assassins. That's one way to deal with a problem. Now for fans of this character, this didn't play too well, but the character or a version of her would be revived years later as Kate Kane, and as a little tongue in cheek decision, she would be a lesbian. Number 3. Deathstroke Takes Down the Entire Justice League Identity Crisis is an infamous story at this point, with many a moment that has been called into question, and this, this is one of them. Deathstroke taking on the whole Justice League and essentially winning. Deathstroke the Terminator first appeared in the 80s, in the second issue of the New Teen Titans. He was an assassin, modified through experimentation. And yes, he's skilled, there's no doubt about that. And he's cool. The one-eyed costume thing, it's really cool. For these reasons, sometimes depending on who is writing him, he achieves god-tier status. In this fight, he takes out Green Lantern, Green Arrow, The Flash, Zatanna, Black Canary, and more. I mean, he's good, but again, let's be realistic. This scene is Deathstroke porn. I like Deathstroke, but I can also acknowledge that he has limitations. You don't need like eight people to take him out. You know what other series does this? Deceased, the unkillables. Number two, Civil War, the ending. Civil War, the Marvel Comic 2006 event, was at the time heralded as an unsubtle critique of the current political climate. It is about as unsubtle as a brick to the head, but alright. In it, the pro and anti-registration sides of heroes got at it, and things escalate to a battle in the streets. We're talking Cap is ready to kill Tony, there are extra dimensional prisons, and then it all just stopped. They have a no look, what are we doing? We're supposed to be the heroes. And so they stop fighting, because they're the examples. In other words, how do we resolve this? It has to end somehow. It would have been more believable if things hadn't gotten that extreme. He was about to assassinate Tony, who in Civil War is just the worst. Nothing subtle happened in the story, nothing. Number one, The Flash versus Harley Quinn, Heroes in Crisis. The Flash is the fastest man alive. If you are unaware of this, the CW will gladly beat you over the head with it every episode. 
So are you ready for the fastest man to be taken out by a regular human with no special powers or training? If you are, then you're ready for Heroes in Crisis. This is a story that was about heroes and villains seeking therapy that became a murder mystery, and also a bit of a judgment on people who don't want to go to therapy, almost at like a PSA level. As subtle as Civil War. Harley is featured prominently in this story, which makes sense. She has a lot of trauma, but she's also in god tier mode, besting the Flash, well, Wally West, the dethroned Flash. She has a special pop popularity boost that lets her do whatever the plot requires of her. Some people love it, it makes me salty, some think it doesn't exist. What do you think? Are you down for her beating the Flash? Even a traumatized Flash? So those were 10 superhero losses that don't make sense. Let me know some of the ones you don't think make sense down below. If you feel that these make sense, you can passionately let me know that down there too. And thanks so much for watching Top 10 Nerd. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. And we'll see you again soon. Bye bye.